Hello guys, welcome back to Between Us Foos. This is the second part of our K-pop conversation. Last time we talked about pretty much introducing me and maybe a lot of our listeners to the K-pop community and K-pop culture. And today we're going to be talking about the dance culture of K-pop um, covers as well as kind of the crossover between the urban dance community and the K-pop community. So Between Us Foos, let's talk about it. Last time we pretty much talked about and kind of gave me the K-pop 101 and stuff like that, as well as our listeners. Um, but today we're going to be talking and diving a little bit more into kind of the dance side of the K-pop world and stuff. So um, one particular thing is a dance cover. Um, a lot of people, this is kind of a new terminology, maybe not in, I guess, our our little circle here at Almond Studios, but um, the dance cover... Um, terminology is like kind of a new thing. So if you had to define what a dance cover is, what is it? Um, so I guess like it's very literally like a cover or a copy of a dance, right? So I guess nowadays that's very, that's like a really big thing in K-pop because when you, when let's say a group is selling a song, like they're not just selling like the musical aspect, like they're mm -hmm. selling, you know, like I said earlier, like the visual, like, you know, the clothing, like the dance, like the dance is a way for them to sell the song. Like I'd say the song's, you know, not that popular, but the dance is popular. People are obviously going to like, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. They're going to like copy it and then it's going to like spread throughout. I feel like it goes back to like the user created content thing. Yeah. Not that it's so easy for people to like post, you know, whatever they want. Um, I guess like people like a way for a fan to I guess like feel close to an idol for example or like a way to show that like you're a real fan or like I have respect for them is to cover their dance you know and post yourself doing it mm -hmm. like and it's interesting because it's encouraged over there you know what I mean like it's not just over here in America that we're doing cover classes like in Korea itself there's cover classes right yeah, and it's like not even taught by the choreographer, which mm -hmm. I think is what's interesting because it's like, you know, over here, it's like, you, we can't copy like someone's choreography. And yeah. you know, like it's, it's, it's not right. Mm -hmm. But then it's, it's different over there because they want that to happen. You know, like mm -hmm. whenever a group releases a song, they usually release like a dance cover challenge. Oh yeah. Yeah, like we're about to do one later. It's encouraged to, co you know, to copy them and to like, I guess like show your love in that way. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, that's just like another like really smart marketing plan, yeah, yeah, I feel. Because then it's like, oh, you're seeing all these cool people like doing it. And then you yourself want to do it. And then like, I feel like earlier, like, let's say like Wonder Girls Tell Me, like when that first went viral, I feel like people just kind of did it for fun. Mm -hmm. But now it's like with, you know, like with YouTube and how like the most popular like cover dance artists, you know, like they're considered artists, like they get invited to do stuff, you know, like at KCON, like the backup dancers were made up of like two like dance cover artists that I watched on YouTube, you know, like they get opportunities because of this and like they get like revenue because like their videos get like millions of views mm -hmm. and like it doesn't matter that like it's not their dance, you know what I mean? It's like, it kind of like, it's because like they have really good retention, like they're usually the first mm -hmm. ones to put it out Yeah, and like they're good, mm -hmm. you know, like yeah. they can, <laughs> do yeah, well. they can, they mm -hmm. can dance. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. Uh, Do do you have anything else to add to that a little bit? I know. What was the question? <laughs> <laughs> um, so what, what is, is a dance, dance cover? cover? I mean, I'm, Erica's pretty thorough, but yeah. if you had any other two cents. <laughs> um, <laughs> two cents. And it is exactly what Eric said. Um, if I were to add anything, I think it's just a way to... Um, to when you like a song really much like a lot <laughs> mm -hmm. um you kind of just want to keep listening to it and also dance to it you know yeah. and then it's just so happens that like it's a culture where you can even learn the dance in itself and the dances are so like they're they're great you know mm -hmm. like it feels good on your body like it's fun to do so um yeah basically it is what it is whatever eric just said yeah, <laughs> definitely. They're like easy to pick up, kind of right. Like some, at least some, most, at least some the of them. Like you know the, the parts where, the chorus. <laughs> 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 yeah, I feel like it's also. I feel like dance covers and dance in general with K-pop is just kind of another catalyst for people to, um, I guess, get exposed to the community and maybe like, 
kind of use it as their gateway into the K-pop like culture and world and stuff because that's kind of how I was introduced to it, right? Like I didn't know the song, but when you guys had taught me the dance or wanted me to be in a cover video or whatever, mm-hmm. I was like, oh, like I kind of get it now, <laughs> you know? Yeah. It's really fun to do. Like mm-hmm. I think if anyone has ever learned or or as ever of thinking about learning a K-pop cover, like definitely do one. It's pretty fun <laughs> to do <laughs> um, overall, but has this K-pop dance culture been like always a part of it, covers and things like that? Has it always been, I guess, yeah, part of it. <laughs> I said it like three times, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> has the dance cover always been part of the culture? Mm-hmm. Um, in a sense, yeah, <laughs> because that's how it got popular in the first place. Is mm-hmm. because of people covering the dance. Oh, gotcha. I think. <laughs> um, I would say, like, maybe starting from, again, 2007. I feel like that's just, like, a really big year. Because that's, like, mm-hmm. kind of just when everything blew up. But then... It's like the dawn of YouTube, too, I think. Yeah, True. like, I felt yeah. like it began with, like, you know, like, Wonder Girls. Because even before that, when you look at, like, early second gen or, like, late first gen groups, it's, like, they're dancing. But, you know, it's not, like, a dance you want to do. Like, they're mm-hmm. just dancing to the music. Mm-hmm. But then... When it, when Wonder Girls went viral, I don't even know if they're the first, but they're the one I remember the most. Like when they went viral, it's like every marketer's mind like opened. You know what I mean? They're like, oh, we can like sell this, and then like the, like a new like choreography like started being developed. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? And it's like there was like a like a time where everything was like kind of easy and like very point dancey. So like it's easy to pick up and stuff. But I guess like. Now, like, it's kind of having, like, a really nice meld between, like, difficulty and, like, mm. and, like, still having that catchiness. Because sometimes if something is just catchy, it's like, oh, that doesn't look hard, though. You know what I mean? Yeah. So then, like, they can't display their skills if they have any. Right. Or, like, sometimes a dance is just really hard, which looks really cool, but then no one can, like, do it. Mm-hmm. And then, which, you know, people still try, but then you kind of lose that sense of satisfaction where it's like, oh, I, I literally can't do it. Mm-hmm. So then you kind of like lose that kind of like connection, you know what I mean? Right. And uh, connection is the big word that I'm hearing a lot is that it's just another, like the dance itself is just another way to connect with this artist yeah. and stuff, which we actually talked about a little bit connecting to the music in a previous podcast that we um, did, um, which you guys can check out on Spotify <laughs> <laughs> and Apple Podcasts. Um, but yeah, like connecting to the artist and having that ability to do the dance is really important. Um, but these K-pop dancers are really talented um a lot of them are um Mm -hmm. especially if they're quote unquote the dancer of the group and stuff um so in your opinion who's the best k-pop dancer (laughs) (laughs) i know there's like this is like hot take but literally just talking about this um (laughs) well well so the disclosure is that like nowadays there's a lot i think groups are catching on and are like uh really focusing on that role Mm -hmm. as being a really good dancer um it's not about just the vocals anymore right um but before for me when i was in it i really like um snsd's hyo Hyo yun yeah yun yeah she was my favorite dancer she was like really great like i've seen her do different kinds like i i straight up youtube did like huyun dance dance and like she did a lot of different styles and i was like yeah she can dance you know what i mean mm-hmm. and she was the dancer of that group it's a nine girl group so like oh, yeah. <laughs> oh wow she was like the dancer That's cool. <laughs> mm-hmm. um i personally feel well for males i would think taemin when it comes to mm-hmm. just like strict skill and then for females i would say momo from twice which who is also another like nine girl group member. Oh, okay. But then they are also very popular as well. So, you know, like dance is subjective. And then sometimes I do wonder, like, I'm sure, you know, there's like really good dancers out there, but then we might not know them. Mm-hmm. But then just like from how I feel, like from who I know, you know, it's yeah. like those two would be. And I think it's just really cool because it's not like, just like fans are being like, oh, like they're really good, you know, mm-hmm. like just because they're popular, but then they have a lot of like industry like respect. Right. And you know, they'll be like, oh, like they'll ask like Leah Kim, who's like a really popular like choreographer from like One Million. Mm-hmm. Like they asked her like, oh, who do you think is the best idol dancer? And she's like, oh, Momo from Twice because of this, this, wow. and this. And you know, there's like a different- Level of like respect. Yeah, when it's like someone who's, you know, not a fan, 
but uh-huh. then is like high in the industry saying that this person wow. is good. You know what I mean? That's crazy. I have to check her. But out. then there's a lot of really good people, honestly. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty sure. Um, but you did mention one million studios, and I'm I'm they're really huge in yeah. in and of itself, right? Mm-hmm. And so it's a studio that we definitely like look up to or like take a gander at every so mm-hmm. often. Um, but I think it's kind of cool that these choreographers are starting to get a little bit more spotlight, mm-hmm. um, and that's just one of those catalysts and stuff. So um, ultimately, I think it's just really cool that dance is just like a bit huge part of the K-pop mm-hmm. community. It's like, yeah. again, it's the visual aspect of it. And they have such a respect for it, like I guess in similar vein to how we are in the urban community yeah. as well. Um, so what's interesting though is like with in terms of covers, like there's actually a lot of people that take our cover classes um, here at Almond Studios and already know the dance. Mm-hmm. And it's interesting. Um, and then to an outsider um, who doesn't really understand maybe um, why they would take the class, like I do want to hear that your take on the explanation of why they would want to um, take that class just for people who don't particularly understand that part of it. Mm. Well, um, I feel like K-pop dance covers is kind of cool because anyone can do it. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like even if you're not a dancer, if you're a fan of like the group, like you might be compelled to like learn the dance. Yeah. And then I asked one of my students who's like actually a really good dancer who I know like knows it. Mm-hmm. And then she comes to take class and I'm like, why are you here? And then spending your money. <laughs> <laughs> but then she's like, oh, like I kind of just like enjoy like dancing with everyone. And then she's like, and I like like being taught it because uh, I guess like her dance background, like she's, you know, she doesn't really take like dance classes and stuff or have dance at school. Mm-hmm. So she's like, oh, like it's different when someone's teaching me like versus me like learning it by myself. Mm-hmm. And then she's like, I like like refining my movement. And I was like, oh, that's cool. Oh, that's really cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like mm-hmm. um, there's a lot of people that I think also because they want to get into these K-pop dances and stuff, they actually kind of jump ship. I don't want to say jump ship, that's not the best <laughs> word. Um, but they jump over to like wanting to really learn urban choreography and actually, actually learn these skills so that when they do do these dances, um, that they can really be, I guess, for lack of a better word, more accurate with their movement. Yes, and, um, exactly. I yeah. agree. So I think it's just really cool that like they're connecting through dance, but just in a new light. Like, yeah. And with us in the urban community, obviously we're here learning essentially new pieces week to week to week Mm -hmm. um, in terms of our classes. And then we still connect on an an energy level. Like we like we give each other support and energy Mm -hmm. and it's the same thing with K-pop. But just again, a new take on it almost. And I think I want people to kind of like understand that and almost like give it a try if they want, like just to really Mm -hmm. see. And I, for me, I've taken a couple of K-pop classes as well. And it's just, it's really cool to see the community and how close, they can be because of these artists and these dance and these songs and things like that. Mm-hmm. So, um, speaking of crossing though, um, the urban community and K-pop culture. So this is where I guess a lot of the we're so like we're like sisters that have like never met. If that makes sense, uh, yeah. <laughs> like it's it's the same. I don't want. Uh, what's the best way to put this? It there's a lot of crossover with mm-hmm. it. There's a, and it's it, they're all under dance, more or less, and I think understanding each other's culture is like a good way to do, um, to kind of expand both almost, and it's kind of interestingly one of our missions here at On One Studios. Um, but I know that like a lot of urban teachers, um, or when I say urban teachers, you know, people primarily known in the urban community, mm-hmm. um, teach K-pop dances and stuff. Um, that's where a lot of the crossover happens, where mm-hmm. you do have Lyle Banigas and Keonis and Shauna Baristos, like, and has Sora done one? I Sora can't... has done Sora one. Sora has done she one. She did one last year. Yeah, so like, just to see, and then that's like, again, another gateway for people to kind of get exposed to this. Mm-hmm. Um, but it does come with a little bit of challenge though, because then I guess because of the crossover, where, and even you had said that um, in the urban community, it's not particularly, I guess, like quote unquote okay to mm. you know like yeah learn a dance and stuff but then in the k-pop community 
it is. Yeah. So it that's where it's starting to get a little bit, I guess, muddy. And honestly, my mission today is just to really bring up the conversation and just to really hear everyone's perspective on it. Um, but what is your perspective on kind of that crossover and how um, can we as dancers just kind of, you know, um, coexist, I mm-hmm. guess, if that's the, the best way to put it? I guess, well, as you mentioned before, there is like a really lot of famous like famous choreographers that choreograph for K-pop. And then it's great because times are changing because back in the day, it's kind of hard to find out who choreographed this. You know what I mean? Like when they release a song, it's like, oh, lyrics by this, production by this, 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 and this. And then Mm -hmm. because dance is so big, like I was, it always like made me wonder like why in the past I didn't know who who choreographed it. Mm -hmm. But I guess, you know, like times are changing and I guess like they recognize that like, especially with like more famous choreographers that they bring like their own like fans to it you know what I mean and like usually if Keone like does like a new like BTS song he would post on Instagram too you know like they're like self-promoting which is like great and like associating themselves with it which I feel like is a good like hack and like that barrier Mm -hmm. but I think hmm it's kind of just it's you have to like keep it a really open mind Mm -hmm. um because you it is two different cultures right like what does seem wrong to you, like, isn't wrong to someone else. I feel like that's kind of, you know, like, that's kind of hard to accept. And then some people might be like, oh, it's just dance, you know what I mean? And like, Mm -hmm. but then this could be said about any way, you know what I mean? Like how your mannerisms, it's like, oh, but then they think it's wrong. It's like, oh, but then, you know, it's whatever. But like, it's not really. Mm -hmm. And I don't know, I feel like you kind of like, like you said earlier, Kevin, that you kind of just have to try it yeah and like like you like you won't get it if you don't try it like you can read about as much as you can Mm -hmm. but then like if you don't experience it and like you know like are in that community like in that room like learning with like these people like you won't get why they're there right that makes sense i mean for me like it's almost like a weird like like we deal with this all the time with like copyright i guess as Mm -hmm. like artists and stuff yeah but then it goes like how far does that extend i guess because like kind of similar to what you were saying about um i guess k-pop companies um sorry if i'm using mm-hmm. the wrong terminology um they uh they kind of expect people to cover these dances and things yeah. like that um whereas kind of like let's say in the american culture like um people who release music they want people to sing and dance along to it yeah. right so it's kind of like I, that's kind of where I see the parallel particularly is just like if it's it's an expected thing that they want you to do yeah and I think a lot of the I guess I don't want to say contention but I, I guess a lot of the misunderstanding comes from um, lack of understanding like literally yeah. like um, and I for us here at on one studios we started our k-pop program to bridge these communities and that was kind of the big and i remember having this meeting with you and the other k-pop mentors at the time Mm -hmm. um like just really wanting to like have people understand and just kind of be under one roof and say hey let's dance and like Mm -hmm. let's just have fun you know um so um what's cool though too is like even our um we have another class that's offered called K-pop choreo, which is like original choreography, which mm-hmm. is going to be, it's the perfect bridge, you know, for yeah. both communities to be like, okay, this is a place where it's like the music that I love, a dance that I can learn and have fun with and things like that. And that's what our big mission is. Um, is there anything else that you, either of you maybe want to add to that in terms of our K-pop program here at On One Studios? Well, I think of it like earlier in the question, like, um, just these, I guess, perspective of people and dance covers, K-pop mm-hmm. dance covers. Um, I wonder where that, I guess, uh, resistance comes from. Mm-hmm. Um, because if you think about it, like people cover songs all the time. Yeah. Like vocalists, they pick a song, they learn it, then they record it and post it on YouTube. Really mm-hmm. shows like their skills you know Mm -hmm. like obviously they connect to the song they arrange you know they sometimes they even play it themselves the song itself and like yeah that's a cover so same here Mm -hmm. is like where you as a dancer want to showcase your skills and want to show like you know this choreography which i think in, in in that mindset like i think is a great choreography i think i can pull it off with my skills and mm-hmm. like here it is you know what i mean mm-hmm. so right. that's essentially like that's really 
sometimes is it you know what i mean Mm -hmm. it doesn't the resistance isn't because it's someone else's choreography therefore we shouldn't be teaching it in class in our studio or whatever but sometimes it's really just about um performing it you know like dancing it and being able to connect to something that you are passionate about Mm -hmm. whether it's dance the song or the artist you know right so i think that we just have to figure out why there's if you know like if there is resistance to it because there's a lack of understanding why people would do it you just have to step back and like look at it in a different perspective like what if this was a music studio a vocal like you know and we offered vocal lessons you know what i mean and mm-hmm. then we had okay friday nights we're gonna do covers you know what i mean mm-hmm. like and the, here you're gonna let's do a michael jackson night let's do i don't know Be- beyonce night you know and mm-hmm. then you just do covers that night it's essentially the same thing you're just doing what you love you know yeah. um and and it, it's and, and we never like really disrespect who the choreographer is mm-hmm. like it's it's Mm -hmm. it's we never say it's our choreography you know Mm -hmm. this is it's given that this is a cover so i think as long as the respect is there then like and it's clear to people i think um there really shouldn't be any resistance regarding it right i think intent is such a big um Mm -hmm. um word i guess in this conversation um you're right like we never as long as um and i'm sure the world isn't perfect i'm sure there are people that are like look at my choreo or whatever Mm -hmm. out there but I think as long as we have good intent and in saying like, hey, we're just um, doing this to like, and this is someone else's work. Like as long as we're not claiming it our own as our own, I feel like it's something that we just have to look at a little differently. I like, I really liked your reference to, um, I guess, song covers. Cause again, how, how far does it extend? And I think for me even too, like um, when you brought up this point, Eric, about like, I guess, not knowing who the choreographers were at the time when you mm-hmm. learn these dances or see these music videos and stuff. We're in this day and age where like that's starting to become a little bit more important, I guess, mm-hmm. or I guess at the forefront, like for example, just recent example, Paris Gobel, um, who choreographed the Super Bowl performance, right? Like Virgilio, that's something exactly. that we would have not ever known and like Shakira. 10 years ago, mm-hmm. yeah, right? Like, and so I think because of that, just like, giving credit where credit is due like mm-hmm. that that's always been like like the f- forefront like songs like singing and da- singing has been a lot more um i guess exposed to that versus mm-hmm. um dancing yes. and that's what's so cool about like us being in the dance world is like we're able to kind of see that and finally and um finally we're able to like shed light on these people who are super talented and super like thing you know <laughs> one thing i want to say too is like for the urban dancers out there who are hesitant to take k-pop or not hesitant but like they don't they're indifferent about it or they don't see it as a kind of a class where you you can level up almost Mm -hmm. um i feel like k-pop in its truest form is like the choreography obviously is choreographed by like are well-known choreographers like it's hard you mm-hmm. know what i mean so it's like going to a k-pop dance cover class it's like and being able to do it well mm-hmm. like execute it well that's the challenge oh, you know yeah. so it's like it's not even about just like oh i'm learning a k-pop cover that's on youtube like it's about like applying the skills that you've learned and executing it well you mm-hmm. know what i mean so right so we're going to bring it back to our Instagram question now. <laughs> <laughs> um, so we asked our audience members to talk about um, what is the most iconic K-pop dance of all time. Speaking of covers and stuff, so I'm sure we've um, you've learned a lot of these, Eric. Right? I mean, you learned yeah. all of these except for maybe one, I think, on this list. Mm-hmm. But we're actually going to just kind of discuss the answer to that. What we believe is um, based off of the question, the answers that everyone on Instagram had given us. So relisting them. Um, we have Nobody by Wonder Girls, Wedding Dress by Taeyang, uh, G, Girls' Generation, Genie, also Girls' Generation, um, Sorry Sorry by Super Junior, Lucifer, Shiny, Boom by Ah, um, XO, Growl, Wonder Girls, Like This, Wonder Girls, Be My Baby, Move by Tae Min, Don't Wanna Cry, 17, Card, Red Moon, 
a tease, holla holla, red velvet, Russian roulette, <laughs> see how many there are, <laughs> um, fake love, and butterfly Luna. So in your guys' opinion, out of the, uh, I mean, at least out of the ones that I just listed, mm -hmm. which one of these do you believe is, is, the, most is the most iconic K-pop dance of mm -hmm. all time? All opinions, guys. Well, <laughs> I mean, it's this is a hard question because I have to, th I guess this is my opinion, right? Because I'm thinking like, is this kind of like a general consensus or mm -hmm. is it strictly mine? You know what I mean? Right. So is it qu towards myself or like the world? I, the world's opinion on what's the most iconic? I think probably let's put it in the bane of the world. Okay. Or the perspective of the world, like that's also hard because then <laughs> I'm saying, uh -huh. no, I mean I'm saying like because there's like there's people out there that's younger, mm -hmm. like different generations. So right, like you have to we have to take the entire thing from when it started to now. Right. And out of that, which one makes the most biggest mm -hmm. impact? <laughs> yeah, for me, I think a, a maybe an equivalent that you can pick from here is like. An iconic dance that you can immediately see what you're talking about is Thriller from by Michael Jackson. Uh, yeah, right. Like, like in America, even younger generations like know even that. younger oh, generation, okay. every single person in the entire world and the universe knows the Thriller dance. Mm -hmm. So, um, in, if you had to equate it to that, what dance of this list would it be? I would say Nobody by Wonder Girls. I would um, also agree. Yeah, at mm -hmm. least like not even at least like from a global perspective. Like, mm -hmm. yeah, like, I honestly don't know any, at least in the Bay Area, like, I don't know anyone who doesn't know this dance. And that's, like, saying a lot to even me. Even younger? Yeah, People? even my niece knows it. I don't know oh. why. Oh. Maybe she said she saw a YouTube video. <laughs> oh. And I was like, you know, so it's like, it's it's long lasting. Yeah, <laughs> right. it's timeless. Yeah, it's that's timeless. That's what I wasn't sure about. But I was going to say, I was ready to say that right from the get go. But like, mm -hmm. I don't know, like, what? Does the younger generation do they know consider, that? Yeah, yeah. Do they yeah. consider it the same thing. Um, is what's when did that come out? I guess two thousand eight. Dang. So twelve years later. I mean, we we at our um, <laughs> at our Oost retreat, our Anon Studios retreat, we all did the dance in front of a TV. So like, <laughs> it, yeah. So it's like that was last year. Yeah, it is. I I would say that it is timeless because this we just randomly were like, let's do this dance. Like, <laughs> let's just do it together. And it was kind of one of the funnest memories weirdly of that trip yeah interestingly so i mean i would agree too again um just from more of the urban side or just someone who doesn't know too much about k-pop i would definitely agree that that's um it was like the gateway it's a, yeah, gateway. It's a gateway oh definitely because i think they tapped into the american audience mm -hmm. really early right mm -hmm. like it they toured with the Jonas Brothers. What? Did they really? Yeah, they had a movie on Nickelodeon. I they, remember that. The we girls watched it together. Oh, not girls. Oh, version. we did. Um, Wonder <laughs> Girls. Wonder yeah. Girls had a, a they what? Had a Nickelodeon TV movie what? with schoolgirls. Do you remember them? No. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I'm gonna look this up after what this. What an interesting fact. That's interesting. We oh my god. I think I remember. Yeah. <laughs> Kevin was there. Oh. I was oh. there. <laughs> Okay, anyway. <laughs> well, see, that's how long we've known each other, right? So, but, I mean, who's to say that we're the ones that are actually the, you know, the people to say the right answer to this? So, yeah. definitely, if you guys have a differing, differing opinion or agree with us, I definitely want to know through our comments and stuff. Um, it's been awesome talking about the K-pop stuff in general. Like, I, I feel a lot more enlightened personally just from this, like, hour or so of learning about it. But honestly, I, again, we probably just scratch the surface level so if you guys have your opinions if you guys have want us to talk about future k-pop things like that like definitely let us know in whatever way possible and maybe it'll come back who knows right so that's it and that's all the time that we have for between us foos thanks you guys so much we'll see you guys next time bye